Protected from contamination in a clean room, this is one of the last views of Solar Orbiter in Europe. After a year of tests here at IABG in Munich, the ESA spacecraft's ready to be packed up and flown to Florida for launch. Built by Airbus in the UK, engineers had the challenging task of designing a mission capable of observing the Sun as close as 42 million kilometres away, within the orbit of Mercury. The spacecraft has a number of key new technologies that have been developed just for the purpose of flying close to the Sun. We have a specific heat shield designed just for Solar Orbiter that will reach temperatures of over 500 degrees centigrade on the front side and will keep things as cool as just about 50 degrees centigrade on the back side to protect the sensitive electronics. The Sun generates a bubble of plasma enveloping the entire solar system. Known as the heliosphere, anything within it, including Earth, is subject to a stream of charged particles called the solar wind. Violent space weather from flares and coronal mass ejections has the potential to damage satellites, disrupt communications and knock out power grids on the ground. Solar Orbiter will help answer fundamental questions about the Sun's activity. One of the key questions the scientists have is how the heliosphere is actually generated and how it's accelerated. So what is, what is really uh, driving the solar wind? And the second key question of the mission is understanding uh, what makes the sun change or vary over this 11-year cycle that we all know. So understanding the, uh, the magnetic properties of the sun and how these uh, change over this 11-year cycle is one of the key scientific objectives of Solar Orbiter. To measure the magnetic environment around the sun, Solar Orbiter is fitted with extremely sensitive instruments. And to capture the closest ever pictures of our star, the heat shield has peepholes through it, covered by protective doors. We are going to places where no other solar telescopes have been before. We are going to be very close to the sun to take very high resolution images of the sun, unprecedented uh, spatial resolution. And we are also going to fly over the poles of the sun, regions that are very much unknown because we don't see them very well from Earth, but they are the source of the fast solar wind and therefore are very important. To reach this orbit after launch, Solar Orbiter will use the gravity of Venus and Earth over the course of several years. Solar Orbiter is building on the rich legacy of ESA's previous missions to the Sun, including Ulysses and SOHO. In orbit around our star for more than 20 years, SOHO is still returning spectacular images. This new solar mission will complement NASA's Parker Solar Probe, which launched last year. We will not get as close to the Sun, but we will have a vastly bigger payload complement, so more instruments with more cameras looking at the Sun. So we will do science that is complementary to Solar Probe, and the two will really have a great deal of synergy. Scientists and engineers have been working on ESA's Solar Orbiter mission for more than 20 years. With launch just months away, they can now look forward to unravelling the mysteries of the Sun.